Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road here today with an easy cardstock mini album project for the Zyron Makers team. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a very easy and beautiful mini album using some beautiful paper from Craft O'Clock, a magnetic closure made with the Zyron Creative Station light, and all my other adhesives are from the Zyron Creative Station or the Mega Runner from Zyron. So let's get started. This is the Vintage Bizu Paper Collection from Craft O'Clock, and I'm using an entire 6x6 paper pad, lots of die cuts from their die cut pack. Isn't this the most beautiful paper you've ever seen in the history of the world? I love it so much. The collection also comes with one sheet of quotes. Now all of these are available separately and they will be available soon depending on when you're watching this in the Sandpaper Road shop. So check the description box um, to stay updated on that. These are Project Life cards and they come as a, as a single sheet and then you cut them apart and then these are extras to cut envelopes. Um, it does have a pattern paper on the back so that when you fold the envelope you don't have a blank white. Each page comes with a color palette on the bottom and beautiful images to fussy cut out. And um, it, it, it's a really sturdy, uh, heavier cardstock, so they don't just flimsy up. It's really sturdy. It would be like if you took, you know, a few sheets of paper, die cut them, and stuck them together already. And I may or may not use this uh, 12 by 12 paper pack. Actually, um, in hindsight, I know that I did not get to use it in this project. But I do use the Hero Arts um, brown cardstock and the Mega Runner for the majority of my project. This is the half inch Mega Runner cartridge refill just straight out of the box. I'm going to show you how easy it is to load your Mega Runner. You don't have to thread anything. You don't have to do anything. You literally just pull it out of the plastic and it really only fits one way and that's it. You're literally ready to go. That's literally it. So it makes life really, really easy. The Creative Station Light um, is also by Zyron, and it's this really fun machine. Now, currently, I have the three-inch cartridge in it. It's a double-sided, a double-sided. It's a double. It makes something into a sticker, but you can replace that with the five-inch cartridge or the three-inch cartridge if you wanted. Um, I also have the laminate cartridge and the magnet cartridge, and those all go in the same machine, and you don't have to use it all the way through to change it out. You could simply just lift it out mid-project, um, and the color coding in the bottom makes it really easy to tell which um, color goes with which cartridge. So if you're looking for something to buy or sort your cartridges or whatever, it's really easy to keep them organized. So um, I'm going to show you how easy it is. You saw me pull out the three inch one and I'm going to replace it with the five inch one just because it's going to, my pages are going to be too big. My papers are going to be too big. Now I will say that what you do have to do is make sure that that opening flap is, well, is coming out of the bottom there. So you might have to just kind of just help it a little bit to get going, just like anything. I almost cut this part out of the video because I wanted it to look super easy, but I left it in because it really is easy. Um, it was just a matter of getting it to fit right in. It slides right in just fine. And then I took my little um, bone folder and just untucked the little flap, and it's as easy as pie. So... Here is how to construct the album. Now, if you are a, um, a new viewer, then check, definitely check out my channel because I'm on a little bit of a mini album kick. So I've got some other ones that are more like show and tell type mini albums. Um, but this one, I actually show how I constructed it. So I do put the measurements up on the screen there in centimeters and in inches. And so each of these pages, I'm cutting... Um, according to the measurements that you saw on your screen. And if it's too fast or you don't feel like stopping and pausing or whatever, head over to the blog because I have all of these measurements down on the blog as well. But essentially what we're doing is using five sheets of the cardstock. And you cut them so that they are the same, you could see it's the same six and a quarter, um, it will be from top to bottom. But from left and right, horizontally, 
the dimensions change and decrease a quarter of an inch each time. And you'll see when I hold them all up together after I cut all five. This cardstock, by the way, is super heavy. Uh, it's 111 pound cardstock. And it was the first time I've ever used Hero Arts cardstock and I really like it a lot. With that being said, I'm going to say that maybe in hindsight for this project, um, there you can see that they're lined up at the bottom, but they're a quarter of an inch difference when you hold them up together. See? And that is going to be necessary for our folding. Okay. In hindsight, as I was saying, um, oh, right here, I'll get right back to that. This is at four and a quarter, and I also put that in centimeters as well. And we're just going to score everything at four and a quarter inches, flipping it. So the first, and because they're a quarter, or they're a little bit longer as they go um, in horizontal measurement, then if you keep scoring them at the same measurement, you'll see the score lines get smaller and smaller and smaller. You'll see when I hold it up, it's really hard to explain with words, but you score at four and a quarter each time and then flip it and score at four and a quarter again. And there you can see, this is a good view of what I was trying to say and not say very well. They're all scored at four and a quarter, but you can see they get smaller as they go because the paper got smaller as we went. And then we'll fold all those and that will help us create our mini album. Okay, so now it's just a matter of folding and getting that score line real nice and crisp with my bone folder. But um, in hindsight, as I was saying, I might choose to use a little bit actually of a lighter weight cardstock than this 111 pound. I love this cardstock and I think it's great for... I actually do like it for many albums, but for this particular style, it got a little bit um, it got a little bit thick because the craft o'clock pattern paper is also so thick. And then to try to add pictures to it, it just really got to be um, it was a pretty thick little album. And um, so, if you wanted something a little bit, uh, I guess it didn't not so. It felt a little clunky to me. I didn't mind it, but um, if you wanted something that felt less clunky, you could just start with a lighter weight paper. And this is just my Mega Runner. Um, I'm using it just as you would any other tape runner. And we're just going to stack them right on top of each other. You can see that it releases a bunch of little dots for the adhesive, and they're really, really strong. Now this is the main construction of this album and I actually was inspired by another YouTube channel um, for the construction of this album. And so I'll link in the description box also so that you can check out her video as well. She essentially does the same type of Stack the Deck mini album. I don't know that um, either one of the two of us have discovered this mini album, but sometimes it's nice to see how just other artists do the same kind of project. So I just continued to use the Mega Runner and um, adhere these pieces of cardstock for the pages, one on top of the other. Now, um, I keep saying in hindsight, in hindsight, but when you make a video and then watch it back, isn't it interesting how you could say, oh, I probably could have done this in this order instead of doing it in this order. But I suppose that's how you learn. So uh, if you're gonna do anything fancy to the cardstock, for example, rounding the corners, which I do in this project, I would probably have chosen to do it differently than I'm showing you in the video. Like I may have rounded the corners before I adhered the whole album together because it just gets to be a little tricky and you'll see, you'll see what I mean as I go. Isn't that a beautiful construction? Look how that is. Oh, I could just look at that all day. So now we're going to cut into the Vintage Bizu Paper Pack. Um, that is a, I guess Bizu, I had to look it up on Google, is a French word meaning kiss. This paper pack is absolutely beautiful. I love it so much. I know I say that all the time, but every time I look at it and touch it, and I'm just a, I'm just a paper addict, I suppose. So I'm cutting um, the paper to four by six. 
Now I am trying to be mindful of the design. I didn't want to just hack off one of the corners. You saw me kind of clip an end off of each side uh, instead of just cutting two inches off one side. And I do that for all the pages inside the paper pack. The six by six paper pack comes with 18 pages and they're double sided. And I'm going to run through them quick just so you could see that all the pages in the paper pack. And then two of them on the front of the paper pack, the actual packaging has pattern paper on the back. That's the packaging right there. So I'm going to use that for the cover, the front and back. And then I'm using my envelope punch board, which has a corner rounder. And I like the way I, I can use just my hand. I just like the positioning of it. And then I'm going to round the corners. And that's what I was saying earlier. Like too bad I didn't think to do that before I put all the pages together. Now I am also going to individually just round the corners of the ones that go, are next to a corner of the pattern paper but not the ones that are next to a straight corner. So I'm not just going to go through my whole pack of pattern paper and just round all four corners. I'm actually going to do it one by one and see what it looks like and do some choosing and just kind of be a little bit more careful uh, with my choices. And of course, you don't have to round the corners. Maybe you like the straight look. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. just depends on the mood, I guess. And then for the spine, I used the coordinating strip that I cut off when I was making them four by six, and that will be for the spine. And then all of those for the adhesive, I'll just run through the creative station. And this album takes it, it's such a quick album to make. Um, great for to use up your stash, um, your paper stash, your cardstock stash, and great to make gifts for people. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really great little mini album. So um, this is what I meant by taking some care and some time. Each individual paper, I'm going to see which side did I want it on the right or the left, and then I'm going to round those corners accordingly. And using uh, the Creative Station Light with the permanent adhesive cartridge, I'm just going to run that right through and cut it off. There's like a little chopping blade, a slicing blade. And you just rub it with your finger a little bit and peel off that front. It's not a laminate, it just is, it just keeps it together, I guess. And then the only reason I had to add Mega Runner to the side is because that was the beginning of the cartridge and it just didn't get started off good. But um, from here on out, it's fine. Yeah, and then it becomes, the whole back of it becomes a sticker. No wet glue, no peeling off strips of, you know, uh, double-sided tape. Um, so for this project, and for the size of the album, it really makes life so easy. I think the whole project itself was done in two hours. And you could tell, because this video seems a little bit long, but I sped it up just twice. Like, this is uh, half time. So, yeah. And that's all I did for the whole album. And I truly, even though I spent all the kinds of time fussy cutting out those extras to cut, as you saw in the beginning on that sheet, and I had all kinds of great embellishments, I sort of kept it simple because um, the paper itself is so pretty. Now here, what I wanted to do was try to add an acetate page. Um, and I'm so sorry about the glare. I did not realize that till after. So I kind of try to zoom over to the side and uh, so that glare doesn't become so distracting. But what I'm going to do is take one of the leftover strips of brown from when I was sizing the album and just cut a, a little bit of a like an insert piece. And I'm going to score right here just basically enough where I can get a good fold. I don't really have a measurement because it's, I just did it enough so that I could get like a good fold in that little piece. What does that look like? About half an inch or so. It really doesn't matter. It, if it's too small, it won't fold good. And you want enough to get, um, I wanted to be able to get my mega runner right there. And I'm going to put a notch right in there just for looks. And what's going to happen is I'm actually going to cut a piece of acetate and adhere it to that little brown strip that I'm holding and make almost like a little 
like a little clear page. My thought is that <clears throat> if I have a lot of photos in there, um, you know, a true scrapbooker, a traditional, I shouldn't say true, but a traditional scrapbooker it has probably learned to put everything in a page protector. And so sometimes when you get into other mediums like little mini albums and little gift albums, it's kind of hard to get out of that page protector mindset. Um, and you know who you are because I, I bet there are some of you out there who are like that too. So an acetate page is a great way to keep that sort of page protector um, feel to your album. Um, if you're having a lot of like ephemera in the album and maybe a picture or maybe something you just really don't want to rub up against something on the opposite page, then the little acetate window is really nice. Plus it creates something that's cute and interesting. So I sized my album and now I am going to use the um, Mega Runner to attach it to that strip right there. And then what I'll do is insert the whole page. Now, right here, do you see me trying to do and round the corners? I'm. This is why you're watching this video. Do not do that. I had to bang out that piece of acetate with a hammer. I am not joking. And right there, it didn't even budge. Like it didn't cut it. It didn't do anything except dent it a little bit. It's really strong acetate. And I should not have done that. I should not have tried to round the corners of acetate. I do not know what I was thinking, but it didn't hurt my um, envelope maker, which I couldn't believe after I took a hammer to it. It still worked just fine for the rest of the project. And I couldn't believe it didn't damage the acid. I just couldn't believe everything was just fine after <laughs> I was whacking away with a hammer just to, just for the sake of trying to round the corners of this clear acetate. Now that in my hand is a, um, I've used it already in the video, but I didn't mention it. That's a little square. Um, it's like a adhesive eraser. And sometimes, you know, when you're using like a dry adhesive versus like a wet glue, um, it just tends to get a little bit gummy. So... And that is an eyeglass cleaning cloth and I'm trying to wipe off all my fingerprints and stuff before I attach it because it's a lot easier to do it before than after. Now, I didn't like the fact that you could see the Mega Runner lines through the acetate. So I'm going to cover that with a strip of pattern paper. I feel like this, um, I made this just a little bit more difficult than I could have made it. Um, I think sometimes I get nervous when I'm doing, isn't it funny? I Sometimes I think I get a little nervous when I'm doing a video for something than if I'm just sitting and just doing it for me. Um, so that's not really an excuse, but I think I just made this a little bit harder than it had to be. So maybe when you're trying this project, um, you know, maybe you won't do the acetate window or the little acetate page, or maybe you'll do it a little bit differently or do it in a different order. But again, these videos are just meant, um, they're meant to inspire you and uh, show you what some of these products could do that maybe you've been interested in and haven't tried yet yourself. So uh, that is, I'm putting the pattern paper over top just because I didn't like the way that that was um, showing where I put the Mega Runner. See, now I can put that page right in right there. And again, what's the purpose of the page? It's just a little bit of interest. Again, I just wanted to show you some different things you could do in your mini album. Um, it's maybe if you wanted to put a picture on one side or two, one picture on one side of the acetate page and another picture on the other side, then that would serve as like a page protector between the two pictures. You ever have a pack of pictures and two of them get stuck face to face and it gets, um, they get stuck together. Um, that's not good. So, and I think it looks kind of good like that. And then I uh, choose the piece of pattern paper and round the corners, and then that's going to go over top of where I adhered the little flap for the page. I do like the way the Creative Station light works. I, I like how that adhesive is so easy. It's really fun to use that little crank too.
there. And there is the page. And you do kind of have to work it because like I said, that the cardstock is so heavy. Um, and there you have the page in the middle. Now, um, I'm going to show you this idea I had to make like a closure, okay? Uh, a lot of times I use ribbon or something like that, but I thought, well, if I have this magnetic cartridge, I bet I could make a magnetic closure. But you have to, you saw how we have to run it through. It's either all or nothing. So this is a strip of the paper. And what I'm going to do is score it. to try to give allowance room for the album itself as the pages fill up. I think that was like a, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. As soon as I stuck it on the album, I knew I should have done like a half an inch. So I'm going to rescore that right there. Now I probably should have done a different, a different paper, but that's okay. Yeah, there, that's much better. Now, what I'm going to do, this is with this my trial one uh, with some, just a scrap of paper. See how it's laminated on one side and then the I want it blank on the one side and the magnet on part of it. Now, this is how the magnet comes out of the creative station. It, it's, um, it's pretty thin. You can actually even run it through your uh, paper cutter and cut right through it. Let me show you what it's intended for, the magnet. Um, this is just one of my business cards, and you run it through, you cut it with a little blade, and there you you have it. You can make a magnet out of anything, a picture or whatever, run, your, run it through your paper trimmer, easy, okay? So that's to give you an idea of how, what kind of a depth we're talking about with the magnet itself. Now, I was thinking in my head, what if I could find some metal pieces like metal brads and stuff and decorate the front cover? What if they stuck to the magnet? Then couldn't I, in theory, decorate the front cover and then make the magnet closure so that it would stick to the metal? That I thought about that for weeks. Now, I have a ton of metal brads and stuff and some of them are really strong. They stuck to the magnet, no problem. But other brads that I tried, they didn't stick at all. And that made me think, well, maybe they're not metal. They might, I wonder, like that one just wouldn't stick no matter what. Like, I wondered if it was almost like plastic that was painted to look like metal. So definitely, if you're going to give this a try, try everything and know what is going to stick to your metal and what, or your magnet and what isn't. So, um... Now you see I had that with that paper with the lobsters and I had some washi tape um, and I'll explain that in a minute as we go. So I'm trying to get magnet just on the one part. What I'm going to have to do is use a scrap piece of paper, just scrap, and cover up the part of this strip that I don't want to have the magnet on. Do you see what I mean? So that part that is covered with the white, we're just going to peel off anyway. You see what I mean? Because they're both going to go through, but then the part that's um, exposed is going to end up with the magnet on it. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to make sure that that's lined up where I want the magnet. And then I just I crank it through. Now, I know it seems like I'm wasting magnet. It seems like that. You've got a whole cartridge there, and if you want to run something else next to it, you know, whatever, or use a business card for your quote-unquote scrap, or just do this project. It is um, it is worth it. It's, it's a nice way to use your brads and your stash, and it comes out really nice. I was actually pleased with the results. So I just trim off the excess magnet. Now, there's where the scrap is, see? Because it's not adhered to it. It was just laid on top, remember? So now I can just trim that off. And now I've got magnet stuck to the inside and it's laminated on the strip, which really helps to keep it strong. And that's how it'll go. Now, what I'm going to do is on that part of the strip, I'm going to use either a mega runner or I'm going to mask off and 
run it through the um, the strip right here or the the creative station. So let me show you what I did. I, I chose to do that because it's a little bit stronger. So I'm going to cut another scrap. And instead of masking off, remember, I'm going to run it through where I want the adhesive to go. And I changed out the cartridge, put the scrap paper covering up what I don't want the creative station to touch. Now it kept sliding around because I was trying to cover up a magnet and the magnet was sort of slidey. So I did add washi tape here. Remember that the adhesive cartridge doesn't laminate. The one that I have, the pink dotted one, doesn't laminate. So I would be able to pull that washi tape off. The other one did laminate, so it was stuck there once it was laminated on top. So, and I know this seems like, I, I can already hear your thoughts. This seems like so many steps when you're probably thinking of a thousand other ways to use magnets. But I think it's the point of just all the different things you can do with this creative station. And there it is. The scrap peeled off and you can see there's the adhesive on one side, a blank middle, and a magnet on the other. So I'll stick the magnet, or the I'll stick the adhesive to the back and I, it was hard for me to see. So I used a little guide there for myself. Okay. So now the adhesive part is stuck to the back and then it will fold over and the magnet will be for the front. And to cover up that part there, I'm going to stick the paper over top. This is really, really good. It, like I said before, if your cardstock is a little bit thinner, the cardstock was a little bit heavy for this type of magnet, um, but the project itself, I think, would um, adhere just a little bit stronger if I wouldn't have made the, the album itself so heavy. What was I trying to do here? Oh, so I took my um, Spellbinders tool in one, or also known as a pokey tool, and um, I just thought for, just to use some of these decorative brads, I'm actually using the ones there on the spine that didn't stick well to the magnet, but they're so pretty. So um, I'm just for decoration, poking them through all the way through the whole entire album, all five sheets and uh, having the brads in the middle. Now it's not my, look at how beautiful that looks against that paper. I'm not a huge, huge fan of being able to open the middle of the book and see that closure. And I suppose you could cover it up, but I don't know. Even when you open a regular book, you can see where they bind it together. So I left it, um, it makes it, it kind of adds to like the vintage -y look. Now these are brads that have letters on them and I was thinking if I did my time, my potential, my true love, my family, my dream journal, just any other, any kind of quote I wanted to do. Um, but the my, the brads that have the M and the Y, they're super, super strong magnets. And that little frame right there was also, or metal, it also stuck. I keep saying magnets when I mean metal, so my apologies, but I, I hope you know what I mean. They really were sticky, and I, it, I really wished that um, I would have used more of those brads with the letters. I could have done it a bunch of different ways. Like I could have done almost like a crossword looking thing and utilized more of those metal brads because they ended up sticking really well, a lot better than the metal frame. And then there's some of these dies and I had, I had these flat metal pieces. Uh, I think they're, they might be from seven gypsies. I don't know, but um, I had them in my stash and because they're flat, I knew that I could attach them to the back of a die cut. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do to sort of sneak metal into the cover and then still have that magnet closure just rest against it 
and it will stay closed on its own. And if you use thin enough uh, pieces, then look at that, the magnet and the die cut ran right through the creative station with no problems. And then I had a sticky back piece of metal and a sticky back die. Isn't that so cool? I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Oh, just, uh, just deciding on the cover. And I'm going to use one of these Project Life cards. This paper is truly so beautiful that I could have just left it as is. Um, but I did embellish it just a little bit. I think I went through here with some sandpaper. And yes, I did. And sanded off the edges and it looked really good and then I thought to myself that I didn't want to do that like on three sides so I ended up tearing it after doing all this but that's okay it's sometimes that's just the fun of it it's just regular old sandpaper you could use a nail file or something if you want it yeah I put it on there and I thought oh it would look better if I tore it yeah it does look better I'm glad I did that so I'm just playing with um, deciding which metal pieces. I have like a little plastic dish. I think it's actually the packaging from like a pack of razors or something. They make little great little trays. Now the quotes, um, and well, all the paper is manufactured in Poland. So the quotes have the English quotes on one side and the Polish translated quotes on the other side. And that's why when you see the covers of the um, of their paper packs and of their collections, you see two languages. It's not just to make it look nice. So I decided to go with the My Potential. And I am uh, using the Mega Runner just to put it on a piece of the pattern paper. And then I'll use um, the, ma the magnetic, the metal frame and some brads. And then I ink around the edges of some of the, the, oh, there's the potential after I tear it. So this is just, just the basic, uh, I guess the process part of the video, but I will say that, do you see how the cover piece, that brown wood looking pattern paper piece is still attached to the Xyron paper? I did that on purpose because I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to run that brown piece all the way through the creative station once all the stuff was on it. Um, and I didn't want to get it all bulky and then be like, oh, I forgot to run it through the, through the machine. So I just left it on there like that. And at this point, I think I'm just playing with the metal pieces. Now, all the ones in the dish I did... Um, check against the magnet to make sure that they were sticky. And um, let's see, what am I about to do here? Just run some more pieces through the creative station, some more metal pieces to help arrange. It's so nice. It's, I mean, you could use a lot of, you know, your favorite adhesive, but I actually was really surprised that the creative station could take it. Um, cause these are real metal pieces. Like I said, they stick to the magnet, but I've run lots of stuff through my machine. I run foam, um, and made double-sided foam through it. I think I got that idea from Aaron Reed and run these, like I said, these little metal pieces, you can run chipboard you can you know there does get to be a point where it's too thick and you could tell that pretty quick now there I am using my pokey tool to get ready to put some brads in there and then you could see with that other little tag I put a piece of metal hid a piece of metal behind the paper tag just the more that can be metal um, the more that that will attract that magnet piece and you know what you'll see you'll see that it doesn't stay closed at first because of the weight of the album and I think my placement of the metal 
Um, so there's a lot to learn in hindsight. I really do encourage you to do this project. I'm definitely going to do more albums like this. I learned a lot from doing this project this way. And I was so tempted to just do it over so that it would be perfect for the video. But I left it with its little imperfections so that you could learn from the experiences if you did it this way too. Um, yeah, see that? Like, I think it looks really good, but um, I wasn't thinking of the placement. And um, maybe I wouldn't have cut that paper, ripped, torn that paper so small because I had to move it down on the panel to be able to fit where the magnet is. Or maybe I would have made that magnet strip, you know, the part we ran through and made it magnet on one side and adhesive on the other. Maybe I would have made that thicker so that it could go across a larger area. But the technique is there and um, look how beautiful that is. I really love these metal pieces with this paper. I'm just watching myself do it, it's so funny. Do you ever watch the videos of people as they're doing the process and you're trying to tell them where you think that they should put pieces or stick a certain thing or whatever? Um, I enjoy watching other people's YouTube videos. I encourage you to subscribe to the Sandpaper Road channel if you haven't already. There's lots of process videos. Sometimes they're just show and tell videos, but a lot of times they're process videos. Sometimes they're in real time. Sometimes they're they're in quick time like this, but you can always find something that you like and be inspired to go try something. So there, here's where I'm testing the panel before I adhere everything together. And I can see where I'm going to have to stick it in order for it to cling to the magnet. So I'm going to take that whole panel with all the metal and all that and the brads and everything and run it right through. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I was like, yes, I was so happy because for a minute there, I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it did. It did. It got just as sticky. No issues. I did rub uh, with my bone folder over top just to secure that down. Look at that. Good adhesive. Yeah, like it a lot. Stuck it right there. And now um, I'm going to poke that pokey tool. Now I have to be mindful that I've got this... Um, if I'm going to attach brads, I don't want to attach them and then try to peel off the stick, the back. So I'm just poking the holes for now. And then once I peel that off, I'll put the brad. I really wanted to put that other arrow right there. Did I put it there or not? I think I just left it. Yeah, I'm just kind of pushing everything down first before I peel that up. And pretty sure I went, yeah, I did. I went over the front of the album with some Mega Runner um, just to add extra extra adhesive there. Once I peel that off, then I'm going to stick that brad right in there after I when I poke the hole and stick it down. And there is my cover. And the magnet closes. And I have to say that when at first I thought it was going to click a little bit more secure and I saw that it, that if the my just would have been a little bit lower, it would have been really secure and it kept popping off. And I was like, dang it. Cause I, that my should have just been a little bit lower, but oh, well, I'll remember it for next time. I'll remember it for next time or one of those flowers. If I would have had one of those flowers there. So here's the finished album. I added some paint spatter and, um, worked through all the pages um, to decorate them, but I did keep the decorations a little bit minimal. Look at that. Look at those side brads on the, on the spine. I love that. Look at the way the pages look. It's beautiful. I am so happy. I love the way it says, trust yourself. And then you open it, it says my potential and the, my, like I said, in hindsight, all those pieces are metal, but I would have put, I would have paid more attention to the strength of those brads and put them right by the magnet. There's the magnet, and then there's the part where it was masked off. And let me show you the inside. I, like I said, I kept the decorations to a minimal. If you're going to put photos, here's like a little pocket with a flap. You could put a picture on the back or the front or just tuck a picture in the pocket. You could tuck memorabilia, ephemera, 
a four by six picture will fit over a page. Um, you could add more or less embellishments. I didn't add very many at all because I thought, well, if, if you were going to put pictures over the paper, you know, then you wouldn't want to cover it up with embellishments. There's a little insert that you could put a picture. Look at the beautiful paper. I put some more quotes. That one says smile. Um, and you could either cover that up with a picture or put a smaller picture there. Um, you just have to watch your size and cut the crop your picture to less than four by six. You could add embellishments. But again, you know, the album was already so heavy. So I thought, uh, I'm just going to leave it. There's our... Um, with the inside where the brads are, there's our acetate page where you could put a picture and have the acetate cover it and then go another picture there so they don't stick together. But I want to show you something else you could do with the creative station to alleviate that issue. I have the laminate cartridge in there. It's a double-sided laminate. And this way, what you could do is actually laminate a picture Now with this, you'll see I go a lot slower cranking, and that's something I learned from experience. And it will cold laminate your uh, picture or, you know, your newspaper clipping or whatever, and you just rub it. You could see there it's the lamination. No heat needed, nothing to plug in. There's no electricity. It's just, um, I don't know how it works, but it's magic. That way you're essentially making page protectors for your individual things. So if, if that's something that um, kind of prevents you from making mini albums or other things, you might like this lamination uh, cartridge. And that way then you could actually get the cartridge that laminates on one side and has an adhesive on the other side. And then you could have something, look at that, look at that pocket. I love it. You could stick a, a photo in the pocket there if you wanted, um, or you could, like there's another pocket, you could have a photo there and then another photo in the pocket. And when they face each other, they won't stick together because one would be laminated. And you could do that all through the album if you wanted. And there's more of the pages. You know, you could decorate as you wanted or just leave it as is. Isn't that beautiful? And there's our magnet closure used with the uh, Mega Runner there and the Creative Station. And there's our finished project. So just wanted to say thank you so much to the people at Zyron and the people at Craft O'Clock for uh, sponsoring this video and sending the um, supplies over so that uh, you could see how they work. And um, thank you so much to Zyron and Craft O'Clock that I'm uh, a part of your teams. It's really fun. And uh, thank you to all of you, the viewers. Thanks for subscribing. Head over to the blog and you can see close-up photos and measurement details and check out Sandpaper Road on social media. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.